everyone, and thank you for joining us. This is Christy Villanueva with the West San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. And today with me, I have Selena Pena from Lift Fund. She is the Chief Advancement Officer. And we're so sorry that uh, the president and CEO, Janie Barrera, was not able to be with us. But good morning, Selena, and thank you for being here with us. Good morning. Thanks for having us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. So you've got some wonderful things going on, and we're very appreciative of your collaboration with Bear County Commissioner's Office or Court, Bear County Commissioner's Court, and everything that they're doing. So the purpose of our a conversation is the wonderful loans and grants that they have provided in this time of need with the COVID-19. But before we get on that, I wanted to ask you, remind us again, the purpose of Lift Fund and, and everything you do in this universal product that has been created. Sure. So Lift Fund was founded in 1994 um, here actually in Bear County as Acción Texas. Um, we changed our name in 2015 as we started expanding and saw the needs of our clients as it relates to larger loans and different products um, to serve the community better. Um, we are a nonprofit community um, community development financial institution known as a CDFI. Um, and within our mission, our goal is really to um, lift um, businesses up um, when others can't. Um, and we do that with um, products as it relates to small business loans um, and also providing support services, which is typically through business consultations um, and events of learning, um, which we've also collaborated with you on as well. Yes, Absolutely. We've had some wonderful workshops together between West Chamber and Lift Fund. Mm -hmm. So, and then, and in the amount of the loans that you currently cover in your universal program, that can be as little as what? Yeah, so as little as $500. Um, we've um, continued to make sure that um, building credit and capital um, starts with where someone is. And sometimes it could be just, I need to get that lawnmower um, or I need to get that truck to start my business um, or to expand my business, right? Um, and we go up to $500,000. Um, obviously, during this time, as it relates to the COVID pandemic, we have um, shifted our resources to providing a universal product for small businesses as it relates to um, helping close the gap um, and creating um, at least a foundation of some type of financial support um, during really this economic halt, if you will. Absolutely. So I do want to ask you earlier in our <clears throat> conversation, we talked about what we're hearing in the in the business community. And I know I've been very vocal to on social media and through a couple of the op-eds that I've done to say that I'm, I'm really concerned about the mom and pop shops, those mm -hmm. businesses that may only have one employee or two or 10. Mm -hmm. And what I am happy about is that you still, you care about those businesses also in addition mm -hmm. to the larger businesses that are maybe 50 or maybe 200 because and right. when we categorize different industries through the SBA, I know some are still considered small businesses, even if you yeah. have 200 employees. Um, yeah, definitions definitely vary. Um, and I, I, and as we all know, micro businesses, meaning those businesses that are five and under, um, and those that will be listening, um, you are the economy um, in many of our neighborhoods uh, across Bear County. Um, and I believe that Bear County recognizes it. And with this partnership that we've created um, for a grant and loan program, um, it, it specifically addresses um, businesses um, 10 and under um, for the loan and five employees and under for the grant. Yeah, and that's fantastic. So give us an overview of the partnership between Bear County and Lift Fund and and how this mm -hmm. has all come together. 
Sure. So uh, a couple of things, you and I were talking earlier, what's going on at the national level, um, and there's basically been a stall. So a lot of local communities are trying to figure out how do we, again, create some type of sustainable um, stopgap of, of the economic halt for the next three months, potentially, as it relates to um, supporting micro and small businesses. Um, Bear County um, has stepped up to the plate um, and really um, Lift Fund has a history of doing this. We um, actually implemented a product for Hurricane Harvey and um, have created a, a disaster product that can be replaced um, and create efficient processes for folks um, to apply for that product. So we now um, uh, aside from the collaboration, have built a COVID-19 um, product um, that uh, is part of the Bear County collaboration. So for the Bear County collaboration, there's two programs. Um, one is the grant program, which is maxed at $5,000. Um, it's for businesses um, with five or less and revenue less um, or at a million. Um, and then for the grant, it's for businesses that have employees um, up to 10 employees um, and, again, million dollar in revenue. Um, defining employees equals um, a full time employee equals 30 hours um, or more um, as it relates to the definition by the Department of Labor. OK, well, that gives us a lot of great detail now. I mean, those are some very specific parameters. So if we mm -hmm. have a business that now we do have member businesses that are annually making in the range of, let's say, two to five million mm -hmm. and or have in different years, but mm -hmm. have 20 employees and mm -hmm. some being at that 30 hour mark, mm -hmm. some are at 30, some are at 40 mm -hmm. or a little bit more. Now they're going to have to go through your traditional program. They would go likely. through our traditional program, right? Um, and that loan is up to fifty thousand um, dollars. And we're using twenty eighteen tax returns. We obviously know um, IRS just announced that their um, new filing deadlines are now July fifteenth of twenty twenty um, for twenty nineteen returns. So. We will be using 2018 returns. Um, we'll also be using 90 days um, to demonstrate a loss due to the COVID pandemic. So aside from the employee count and the revenue, um, businesses who apply for either the grant or the loan will have to demonstrate a loss of at least 20% um, in their revenue. Um, so that is also important to understand. So what does that look like, right? Um, one is um, you could share your bank statements over the past um, three months. Um, mm -hmm. We um, actually have a form. Um, it's called our budget and um, assessment form that is part of both the grant and the loan program. They're very similar in nature where we're asking folks to share what was their their previous um, um, income or revenue um, and expenses um, and what is their current one, right? So we want to be able to demonstrate um, the impact, um, and that will be part. That is part of the application process um, in terms of determining, um, you know, uh, the assessment of twenty percent of loss. The other item, as it relates, so there's the, you know, the the size of the business. There's the demonstrated loss of um, revenue and a negative impact of the pandemic. Um, and then we are doing follow-up calls. So everyone has to be open to um, a, a review of what they submitted through that form with one of our team members as well. And we can help people um, fill out that form as well. So they don't have to do it alone if they need guidance or support um, from our team. That's wonderful. And uh, yes, I was just going to ask you about that. The Let's see, those folks that are working from home as part of your office, they're going to be helping to walk our business owners through everything, mm -hmm. the necessary paperwork, what alternatives they mm -hmm. can provide and so forth. Okay. Yeah. We've had a lot of calls about the SBA loan program. So the economic injury loan, the SBA rolled out. 
So mm-hmm. we do have team members who can help um, and create some guidance on that. That is a direct loan with SBA. Um, but we have had a lot of calls and have been working with the SBA district office to make sure that um, we are clear on how to help people access the SBA website for that product. Well, that's wonderful. Now, just to clear up one thing, Mm -hmm. nonprofits do not qualify for these grants or loans, which is the 501c3 related to education and the 501c4 and c6 related to membership driven organizations, chambers and associations. That is correct. Um, It is um, specifically for um, small business um, organizations that includes um, DBAs, right, that are filed with Bear County um, and those that are set up through um, the comptroller and the secretary of state and have um, a corporation. Okay. So, and then since you brought the those up, their registration. So what if the, we do have some businesses that are unfortunately not registered with Bear County? They're only registered with the state. Mm-hmm. Now, would they still qualify or would mm-hmm. you send them mm-hmm. to go register with Bear County first? No, no, no. It would just be whichever one they have, right? Okay, got yeah. it. And then is there any special consideration for those that already carry certifications related to small, minority, women-owned, veteran-owned, what have you? Mm -hmm. So I think in terms of uh, what we talked about from size of business, that I think allows for an umbrella of minority, women-owned, veteran-owned businesses to be um, obviously considered. But I think what's real important for anyone who's listening is preparation. And you and I spoke about this is like, what is a business owner taking steps to understand their financial needs now and over the next three months. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really where um, our the budget and the form come into play because there's only so much we can do in terms of providing capital and grants. Um, but if we can sit together um, or review what you've put together from a plan of action, one of the elements is how feasible is this, right? Um, right. and, and feasibility is probably more, um, along with the budgeting going to be what we would be considering as it relates to the grant side. Um, the loan program, um, as, um, we've shared with folks is it, is it, we are going through our application process, right? So credit will be pulled. Um, a review of those financials will still place. So there's a little more rigor on that loan application process. But to your question, it really is about feasibility, um, transparency, um, and everyone who either knows or is part of a family of a small business knows tenacity is part of it. Um, But at this point, we need to be organized to see how can we sustain. There is a question that says, is your business open or closed, right? And don't dismay if it's closed. The question after that is, when would you anticipate opening? Right. Um, And so, again, we're trying to be proactive in being able to support where you're at now with no judgment um, and where we think you could be and go um, after um, the pandemic um, subsides. Exactly. Okay. well, now I know a lot of a lot of our businesses already have loans. Their credit may not be as good as they want it to be. I know that there's a lot of concerns around that and we don't want anybody to be left behind, but I know you said your staff can talk them through it, help to counsel them and maybe find some new and different ways. So they should not not apply. They should still reach yeah. out to you. Yeah. You, you asked me that. Um, and first I think in, so I did a presentation on Monday And my first thing was you don't have to be alone um, in this process because it could get pretty grim, um, both physically, mentally, and financially. We all know this. Um, And so our team uh, has always met people where they're at um, to try to figure out where can we um, help. Um, And sometimes that isn't capital, right? And everyone knows that capital is not always the solution. It's part of it. Um, and so that might be, how do I, you know, convert over 
what I had been doing in my office and now I need to deliver, right? Mm -hmm. So even talking through um, how do you promote delivery as an option now um, during these 90 to 120 days. So sometimes it's not just capital. It's also like, what's your business model? Um, Is there something we could potentially change or enhance so that you are able to bring in revenue as well? Wonderful. Yes. And and we're recommending that our businesses, member businesses plan, they document, they get out there and do that research. And we're trying to provide those links so they can do that. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Um, mm-hmm. So and how quickly are the the applications being processed? If they mm-hmm. if I started today, would I be contacted within a couple of days or mm-hmm. sooner? Yeah, our commitment, um, at least on in terms of no later than would be two business days, right? Um, So that's the first thing. Um, An application, there's a couple of things about the application. It's a total of five pages. Um, Within those five pages, we're asking you both personal and business information that we're gathering. Um, At the end of the application, there is a connection to a third-party provider called Plaid. Um, And if you utilize Plaid, it will pull in your um, bank statements um, that you're authorizing Lift Fund to review 90 days worth, um, and that will expedite your loan. Um, So folks have that. It's a super easy process, um, and it is um, extremely encrypted and trusted, right, in terms of security. Um, It has 95% of all financial institutions within it. Um, If people don't feel comfortable um, or they want to provide bank statements, there is an upload button for bank statements as well. Um, And that's really the first thing that our team members take a look at before we do the call to. Wonderful. So as we go through this, I know the federal government has sent a couple of different messages and many of our businesses have already had to lay off a percentage of their staff. Mm -hmm. Um, and now they're, they have come back and said, it's so much better if you keep your staff, try to do the best you can instead of laying them off or for them to be on furlough and then trying to rebuild and find new people that are trained. Mm-hmm. I mean, is what sort of documentation do you think that the businesses should have related to that or, or maybe mm-hmm. a, a, a different point of view? that they should consider when kind of thinking about this? Yeah, I I think everyone who is, whether there's contractors, right, um, full-time employees, part-time employees, um, yourselves as well, Mm -hmm. um, there's the notion of, you know, immediacy in terms of protecting your assets. And that's a given. Typically, those assets are reflected from a financial perspective. As it relates to talent, I've had a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails as it relates to, I have folks who were part-time that could get jobs elsewhere that can't right now. Um, and at the end of the day, everyone knows whatever you have is is what's going to dictate your employment strategy. Um, and right now, just based on even Bear County and the city of San Antonio's announcement of Um, stay safe, work at home, shelter. Um, We're looking at schools now staying closed until the end of April. Um, We need to figure out, again, what does our business model look like prior to COVID? And what could we potentially activate? Um, Maybe not at 100%, um, but could potentially bring in revenue so we could potentially keep um, some employment um, continuing. Um, So that would be my recommendation in terms of what's our model prior, what could we adapt to right now um, so that we still keep um, the the wheels turning as it relates to that. As I mentioned to you, um, the comptroller announced yesterday, um, Texas is is just based on the past two weeks filings, um, is at a 9% unemployment rate, which is the highest it's been in a very long time. Um, It typically Keter's over at uh, a little under 4%. Um, Department of Labor um, should be issuing um, strategies as it relates to a national unemployment package. Um, But as you and I know, that's still being caught up um, in the House and Senate at this point. Yes, absolutely. Well, 
unfortunately our our time is up and but I do want to remind everybody can you give us your the office phone number where people can call please sure um our phone number um that will give you a direct person is 888-215-2373 and then our website is um lift fund l i f tfund.com. On that front page, there is actually a big red button um, that is the COVID-19 Disaster Relief Fund. Wonderful. And we will continue to post that. The West Chamber will share it through our social media and through our um, email blasts. And I know you have under that where it says you can to apply now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great information in there, and I really appreciate everything that you put in there. It um, has the unemployment website. It has mm -hmm. SBA information, right. Centers for Disease Control, and, and even more than that. Mm -hmm. so, so thank you so much, Selena, for joining us today. It's, it's been a, a tremendous enlightenment, I know, for myself and I'm sure for all of our listeners out there. So thank you. Thank you for your time today. We appreciate your advocacy and support. Thank you. So everyone, we hope that you'll join us again. This video will be posted several times, not only on our LinkedIn, on our Facebook and other platforms. We really hope that you will continue to join us on YouTube also to learn more. Please stay safe. Please follow the new order as it is listed and we will see you soon. Give us a call if you have any questions here at the chamber, 210-229-1266. And we will see you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.